We seek to uphold the rule of law through the current breach of contract proceedings against Poland. The rule of law is a core pillar of the European Union. On the other hand, we need to find ways and possibilities to work together, as a cascade of legal disputes in the European Court of Justice is no solution to the problem if we are to be believers in the rule of law. Well, for more on this, let's speak to EU analyst Jupp Heisenberg in Brussels. Jupp, thank you very much indeed for joining us. So, uh, blackmail, a very inflammatory term there used by the Polish Prime Minister. Perhaps a bit more conciliatory language used by Angela Merkel. How do you see the situation being resolved? I think this is a very tense uh, situation that we see because the Commission is in a very difficult position. It has to actually defend, actually, the, the let's say, the... Yeah, the foundations of the EU, which is the rule of law, but on the other hand, doesn't want to create a big clash between the member states. So we see on one hand, uh, like Angela Merkel from Germany, but also the French president saying that hey, we don't want to, we want to seek a compromise, whereas uh, other countries like the Netherlands state that we will need to cut actually funding uh, to the polls. So that's actually right now uh, on the agenda. The European Council is discussing this uh, at this very moment. And you mentioned the, the large amount of money that could be withheld from Poland. And with such a, a punishment looming over them, surely Poland are likely to, to give in on this one and, and cave in to the EU at some point. Uh, well, we have to see about that. That is still uh, very unclear. Uh, we, we must uh, realize that this is not just a fight which is happening uh, between uh, Poland or Warsaw uh, and Brussels and the member states. But also, this is about uh, who is actually the boss uh, in Poland. So there are lots of uh, parties in, in Poland which oppose this uh, inflammatory language, uh, the, the reasoning of, of the Polish government that the Polish law goes above the EU law. So it's somehow a bit of a sideshow almost. But, but yeah, it is incredible to see how far uh, the, the current prime minister wants to go. Also, early this week, he was in Strasbourg talking to the European Parliament and he used very inflammatory language there, which almost makes it uh, very likely that at one point there will be a trigger and that there will be this blockage of funds. But that also requires, uh, and that's the interesting part also, uh, let's say unanimity from the member states. Uh, and then uh, Poland finds uh, an ally in Hungary, in uh, Orban, who is also in a fight since many years with the European uh, Commission on this rule of law, on Article 7, and also he is uh, saying, like, okay, uh, Poland is our best friend and we don't want uh, them to be punished. So there's a lot going on, and it's a very complex situation. So it's not um, given yet that, that Poland will lose this money. It could become a very, very nasty fight over the next uh, few months and years. And, and Ursula von der Leyen is also under pressure, isn't she, from the, the EU Parliament uh, with threats to, to sue the EU Commission if she doesn't go ahead and, and punish Poland? How complicated is that situation? This is, this is quite astounding. Uh, what we see from media reports uh, is that the own, um, the own um, yeah, lawyers of the European Parliament are cautioning against uh, suing the European Commission, saying like you have to, uh, the Commission has to, let's say, trigger this, this, this mechanism to, to bring uh, Poland to the court. And, and the European Parliament's uh, own lawyers say, like, this is not something that can be actually be achieved. But still, the, the president of the, of the parliament says, like, OK, we need to do this uh, because this is about the very foundation and even the future of the European uh, Parliament. Um, how this will play out, no one knows. Uh, but this could be a, a fight, uh, what I said before, uh, that, that could have very long lasting consequences on the on the on the credibility and also the formation of the cover of uh, of, the, of the parliament and the and the and the EU itself. And I, I know it's a big issue right now, but it surely could be argued that at the moment there are bigger fish to fry for the EU. There's the the coronavirus pandemic, uh, and of course the energy crisis. I know that's that's uh, one of your fields. Is is this a bit this an unwelcome sideshow? This row with Poland. Um, well, the, the, the council president, Charles Michel, actually didn't want to put this uh, on the agenda. So now he said in the, in the letter to the, to, the, um, um, to the heads of state that uh, he would touch upon uh, the issue of the rule of law. So it's been squeezed into the agenda. But indeed, uh, the energy crisis is one of the many 
uh, urgent uh, crisis that are on the table. Uh, the, uh, the, the leaders in the Council have just uh, concluded uh, speaking with each other uh, about the energy crisis. No conclusions have been, uh, have been reached because, for instance, the publish from Czechia has blocked uh, the, the conclusions. And there, when we look at the energy crisis, so we've been talking about this for four hours, um, there are many things uh, going on. So uh, there are a few member states like Spain and France who really want to change the energy market because they, they believe that the EU is actually the way we organize the, the, the selling of electricity in Europe is actually causing this, this, uh, this, this enormous uh, yeah, uh, spike in, in, the, in the energy prices. And then to make it even more complicated, there are other countries that say like we need to make sure that uh, investments in, in nuclear energy and even in gas is considered a green investment. So this is also uh, being discussed right now and also causing a lot of um, yeah, difficult discussions. And then thirdly, there are uh, member states, again, notably Poland, that say like, and also uh, Hungary, again, that say that uh, the, the European Green Deal, which is now on the table with very far reaching um, yeah, measures to be taken, including uh, greenhouse gas emissions to be reduced by 55% already in 10 years from now, that this should actually be yeah, postponed or, or delayed uh, or even maybe put off the table because they say this will lead in a, in a further rise in energy prices and we cannot actually do this with to our, our citizens. So there are many things now. Um, so it's, yeah, it's again, it's a very uh, tense moment, uh, notably for this, uh, for this energy crisis. And yeah, you can see from, from, the, uh, from the images that the climate crisis is here and now. We have extreme weather events. So the, the commission really wants to act uh, they they say like the, we should actually become less dependent on fossil fuels and speed up the energy transition, whereas other countries like uh, like Poland and Hungary say like no this is actually a really bad moment we need to make sure that our our um, our citizens get through the winter uh, without um, um, yeah being with with being able to to pay for the bill of this it gas is, prices uh, more business it, as usual. It is an important couple of days, you would have to say, you've been and an interesting couple of days, no doubt. We'll have to leave it there, but we do appreciate you joining us. That's the EU analyst, Jupp Heisenberg, there joining us from Brussels.